Uh, okay, class. Uh, again, uh, good morning. Uh, so I will be explaining to you now as a continuation of my previous lecture on horizontal distribution forces. Uh, this storage drift limitations, which is a part of the NSCP code provision. Okay, so this storage drift limitation is just a way of looking into into some a control on the uh, drift or simply the story drift uh, that will be expected no, on the building say I have here a, a structure and I want to, to uh, look, take a look on how the structure will actually uh, move laterally so you call this a story drift or a lateral drift uh, uh, normally taken at the top part of your floor no so this is again a way of uh, of comparing it to to some uh, limitations concerning uh, the pounding effect no if you have two buildings that are very close to each other then you will have to 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 make some building separations that will uh, uh, avoid okay avoid your your building to to uh, bump each other no? so if I have a, a, a building here very near uh, to the other building that I am constructing so there's a tendency for for this of, of course at the top portions the the uh, displacement will be much higher so there's a tendency for these two buildings to bump or pound each other and that is dangerous okay but if you are going to take a look at at the actual scenario uh, for a, a very low, uh, for a low-rise building, they are actually ignoring, ignoring uh, the, the this uh, building separation uh, that we are concerned about here. Okay, so you you have here, you must have here a what you call a building separation. Uh, mapapansin yun ito klas sa mga buildings na tinayo ng unang panahon, nakadikit sila, no? At uh, meron din those new buildings today uh, hindi nila binibigyan ng pansin nito uh, sabi nila mababa lang yung building but uh, there's no such thing as mababa mataas when it comes to earthquake okay so uh, just to give you an idea on how uh, this storage limitation is uh, um, done of course we need to find first uh, uh, the the uh, vertical distribution of forces in which I referred to the to the first example I made on my uh, previous videos okay so this is example one so I computed the the, uh, the uh, forces and then these forces I, I'm going to use to solve so these forces will give me a way on how to solve the static Okay, solve uh, the static deflection. So a static deflection is simply the deflection, uh, elastic deflection uh, taken from our uh, classical methods. We use the slope deflection, uh, the moment distribution technique, uh, also the matrix stiffness uh, uh, formulation. So you can use any, any, any formulation you want, but I'd like to introduce here uh, a very simple uh, approximate way of doing it okay so given the the uh, property as we have also computed a while ago here uh, this is based again on this uh, previous example here we have the properties e l i k and capital k which is simply the sum of the columns in one uh, transverse direction by the way i'm considering here the frames at the 1 to 7 which are actually considered in the transverse uh, direction so the next thing to do is to get the shear at each story by simply uh, adding no adding the forces of coming from the top going down to the base okay so if i have here the the forces uh, the shear forces or oh, sorry the story forces f1 or f3 f2 f1 and I'd like to uh, compute for the shear. 
the shear forces at each story. So I, I simply uh, take the summation of forces vertical uh, uh, on the the top uh, portion of the building. Okay, so if this is my V uh, three, V two, and V one. Uh, my V3 will simply be F3, okay? So, I'm just taking the free body diagram of the upper portion. So, summation of forces horizontal V3 is equal to F3. Summation forces horizontal equals 0 on this story will become V2 is equal to F2 plus F3. And uh, summation forces uh, horizontal equals 0 at this the first story will have V1 is equal to F1, F2, and F3. So, I obtain this three here, no? Very simple but uh, of course this is just approximate but this is a very simple way uh, on how to deal with the with the deflection delta okay now i just consider again my kx which is uh, based on on uh, this okay of course uh, assuming that the the columns are just the same all throughout from the base up to the top floor i just uh, put here equal stiffness but in case the stiffnesses are not equal, then you have to compute it story by story, each and every column along the way, and just add them, okay? Uh, for simplicity of computation, I just assume them to be all equal, and therefore the stiffnesses, or the rigidity rather, uh, are just equal at each story, okay? So I just get this, and then a simple division of my Vx all over Kx will yield this one, okay? And then I just make use of a cumulative delta, okay, meaning to say my delta on the uh, uh, first is equal to the small delta on the first. My delta on the second is simply uh, the, the sum of the delta on the first two. And my delta at the third will be the sum of the delta on the, on the first three floors, okay. So I just obtain now my static deflection. And as I told you, the, the basis for your uh, static deflection is the biggest deflection, which is at the topmost floor of the building. Okay, so I just consider this as my delta S, which means uh, delta S is simply the, the static uh, uh, elastic response. But take note that delta S must consider also inelastic effect because we we may come up with buildings that cracks during earthquake hence a higher value uh, must be used but for the purpose of uh, just presenting to you uh, a way of uh, using or considering the elastic response uh, on delta so this is just elastic uh, this will be the one that we're going to use for the computation of your delta m uh, or your delta maximum okay so this is now 0.70 r delta s. If delta s in the inelastic response considered, then we just uh, uh, place the value of that delta s here. Okay, so how, how to compute the inelastic response, of course, is a different, uh, has a different procedure. I will be explaining to you in case we have time, okay? So for the delta limitation, uh, the formula is 0 0.025 of Hn. Uh, these are, of course, uh, given to us by the code uh, provided for us by the NSCP. Okay? And notice that the limiting value is 0.30 and the, and the uh, computed value is only 0 0.034, very far from the limiting value. So, uh, we can say now that the the story drift uh, limitation is satisfied in this case. So that's how to do it when you are concerned with this story drift uh, uh, provisions of the NSCP code. Thank you very much for listening. Have a nice day.